Hi, this video is for the IPMAT IAM Hindu 2023 paper Con Solutions. IPMAT is an exam conducted for students wanting to get into IAM Indoor uh, after their 12th standard, 5 year integrated course. So let's look at the solution. I mean, the concept, the way to solve will be applicable for any aptitude exam. So it's not that you have to only write the IPMAT exam to look at this video. If you're looking at any other exam like CAT or anything else, the concept remains the same, the methods remain the same. We will discuss some good methods that are there. So if you're really interested in understanding how to solve the process of solving, you can look at this video. Now, if you look at IPMAT Indo cutoffs, uh, we'll come up with another video or more detailed video as such, but general cutoff is so much of the marks for uh, each question. Remember, uh, in SA, almost four marks per question. So that means technically if I solve even one question, I'm clearing the cutoff. For a general category, for short answers, I'm going to even do three questions, I'll clear the cutoff. Now, since this video is focused on SA, so we'll look at SA and try to solve the questions as such. Right? Remember, each question is of uh, four marks for the SA as such. Uh, short answer questions. So let's look at how to solve. Um, so here in the short answer, there are no options. MCQ, there are options. Short answer, there are no options. Um, there are not there are few questions which will be obviously easy, few questions will be difficult, very difficult. You need to pick up the easy questions and solve first and leave out the difficult question for the second. Uh, this particular question not actually difficult, uh, though it may look very difficult because of 95 factorial factor, but it's actually very simple. Normally the remainder when is divided by 15. Normally if you have a large number like this, 95 factorial, you'll always have a pattern which is there. So what's the pattern out here? So let's look at one factorial is basically one, two factorial is two, three factorial is six, two threes are six, four factorial will give you twenty-four, five factorial will give you one twenty. Now from five factorial onwards, all numbers will be divisible by fifteen because five factorial has basically one into two into three into four into five. It has three and a five, fifteen. So it will be divisible by fifteen. Same way from this onward, 6 factorial also will be divisible by 15, that is 120 into 6, 720. Okay, will be divisible by 15 and so on. So we don't have to worry about these because the remainder everywhere out here will be 0. So we need to only focus on these numbers 1, 2, 6, 24. Because everywhere else from 5 factorial onward, the remainder is 0. So this sum is 33. So if you divide by 15, the remainder will be 3. So the answer will be 3. Okay, if you divide by 15, the remainder basically will be 3, which is the answer in this case. Next, what when divided by x minus 1 gives the remainder 2? So, if you know simple polynomials, if you want to find a remainder when you divide by let's say x minus a, what do you do? You put x minus a equal to 0, you substitute x equal to a, and you will get a remainder. So in this case, you are dividing by x minus 1. So put x minus 1 equal to 0. To find the remainder, put x equal to 1. So I put x equal to 1 in this above equation. What do you get? 1 ratio, anything will become 1. So it becomes 4 minus 1 plus 3 minus 5. Well, coefficient basically. 4 minus 1 plus 3 minus 5 plus c plus 2 minus 1 plus 1 minus 4 plus 6 minus 2. And this is remainder gives you 2. So it is. I mean 4 minus 4 actually gets cancelled. Minus 1 plus 1 gets cancelled. Plus 2 minus 2 gets cancelled. So what do you get? Plus 3 plus 6 gives you plus 9. Plus 9 minus 6. Okay. Will give you the value. I'll repeat again. So you basically calculate everything. You realize that plus 4 minus 4 gets cancelled. Minus 1 plus 1 gets cancelled. Plus 2 minus 2 gets cancelled. If you look at the remaining value. 6 plus 3 is 9. 9 minus 6 is 3. So basically you get 3 plus c equal to 2 or c you will get as minus 1. The moment you get c equal to minus 1, so c plus 6 will be equal to minus 1 plus 6 which will give you 5 as the answer. Right? Not very difficult. If you just know simple as to how to find the remainder, I mean this is just simple calculation you get the answer immediately. Right? So the key to getting uh, cracking the exam is to get maximum marks possible as far as possible. Okay, clearing the cutoff is one part, but what you need to do is score as high as possible. That is what will help you to crack the final results. 
function. Now, again, there's a very large value 2023. Whenever there's a rule, whenever there's a large value, like in the first sum we had a 95 factorial, here we have 2023. Whenever you have a large value, you find the pattern for smaller numbers. You automatically get a larger number. You get a pattern from the smaller numbers and from there you get a larger number. So in this case, F1 is given as 1 already. So what is F2? F2 will be substitute n equal to 2, you will get 3 into 2 minus F1 which is 1, 5. F3, F3 will be 3 into 3 minus F2 which is 5 will give you 4. F4, F4 will give 3 into 4 minus the F3 previous one 4, you will get 8 if you look at it. F5, you get 3 into 5 minus 8 previous one you get 7. Try to find pattern. You look at alternate numbers that is pattern. 1 to 4 is plus 3. 4 to 7 is plus 3. Similarly, 5 to 8 is plus 3. So, alternate numbers are increasing by plus 3, plus 3, plus 3. If that is the case, I want F2023. So, from F1, I have to add 2022 functions to get F2023. Right now, every two will give you. You have to add three for 2022 functions. How much have to add? I have to add 2022 divided by two for every two. You get three. Okay, for every two functions, whenever you add x two values, the value increases by three. So to increase by 2022, how much the value will increase by? It becomes 2022 into three upon two cross multiplication. F1 is one anyway. This becomes 3033. I mean 1011 into 3, which will give you 3034. That will be the answer. 3034. Right? Just finding pattern. When you see large numbers, don't get scared with it. Just try to find the pattern with smaller numbers. So we'll automatically get to find the larger number. This is based on a little bit on logs and equation. Again, if you know log 2 to, two to the base 2 is 1, if you rewrite this part, the first part, you get log 2 to the base 2 x whole square log of 2 to the base 2, this becomes 1. So technically the whole equation becomes log of x to the base 2 whole square minus 5 log of x to the base 2 plus 6 equal to 0. It's basically a quadratic equation. If you understand with the roots of 2 and 3 or you can put log of x to the base 2 as t, you get t square minus 5t plus 6 equal to 0. Technically even if you don't put t and you can directly make out that the roots of this equation will be 2 and 3. Sum of the roots is 5, product of the roots is 6, so the roots is 2 and 3. Which means you get 1 log of x to the base 2 as 2 and log of x to the base 2 as 3. This will give you x as 2 square which is 4. And this will give you x as 2 cube, which is 8. So you get 1 is 4, 1 is 8. You want product of the roots. Product of the roots is 4 into 8, which will give you 32. So 32 is the answer. Right? So I understand when we solve, I mean, uh, it looks easier. But technically, if you look at I understand the simple concept is not very difficult to solve. Given the time frame, getting, you know, Enough questions to solve a clear the cutoff will not be very difficult. But my recommendation is focus on trying to solve as many as possible. The more you solve, the more marks you get, and the higher chance of final selection. Right? And I hope this helps. We'll come up with more videos to help you with your regards to remaining questions with better methods to solve and better approaches. That will help you crack the exam. Thank you.